Welcome to ITVideoCoach.com or welcome to YouTube. This is going to be the video presentation on installing Exchange Server 2007. Now just keep in mind that this is going to be a one part video, not a multiple part. I'm going to keep this down within 10 minutes. Uh, but realize that there is a pre-installation uh, pre or uh, a series of videos, a part one, a part two, a part three, and a part four, that show you all the preparation that you need to go through before you ever install Exchange Server 2007. So keep in mind that the actual installation of Exchange Server 2007 is really pretty simple. It's, it's more about all the preparation that goes into prepping your domain environment or your uh, forest to make sure that things are configured correctly before we ever get to that point. So the installation I'm going to demonstrate is very straightforward, it's very simple. You do have a few options to pick from, but it's really about all the pre-installation steps. So please make sure that you go through the pre-installation videos before you ever watch this video. So go back and check those out. ITVideoCoach.com, one video, about 35 to 40 minutes. We'll walk you through and show you all the detailed steps of everything you need to do before you ever even get to install, installing Exchange Server 2007. Uh, if you're a YouTube watcher, you get a part one, a part two, a part three, and a part four uh, series of videos that show you the pre-installation steps. So make sure you check those out. Okay? So with that in mind, let's dive in here and take a look and see what we're going to do. Now if we go out to the command prompt and we just take a look at our structure here. We're, again, we're working with the trial version. And the trial version has all the same features as the full version. So you're not going to be losing any functionality at all. There's nothing you're going to lose in this presentation uh, as far as you know what it's going to show you. It's exactly the same as working with the full version. So there's nothing lost there. Uh, the only difference, again, between the trial version and the full version is that the trial version will expire in 120 days. right? But in actuality, even though it's a 120-day trial, even when the 120 days expires, you can keep using it. So if you got a lab environment and you want to set this up, this 120 day trial is going to work just fine. So just keep that in mind. Now, there are two different versions of Exchange Server 2007. There is the Standard Edition and there is the Enterprise Edition. The Standard Edition is the one that I'm working with. The only difference between the Standard Edition and the Enterprise Edition is that Standard Edition supports five storage groups and a total of five databases. Now by default, after we complete the install, we're going to have two storage groups. One for our initial uh, mailbox database and one for our public folders. Okay, We could add three more storage groups and three more databases. Or we could leave the two storage groups that we have and we could stick a couple more storage groups in the original storage group or in the public folder based storage group. But just remember, five storage groups total with no more than five databases total. So you can have five storage groups and one database in each group. You can have two storage groups, three in one, two in the other. Whatever way you want to dice it up, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Now the Enterprise Edition, you can have up to 50 storage groups and you can have up to 50 databases total. Same type of story. I can have... 50 storage groups with one database in each storage group. By default, you're going to get the initial storage group with an initial mailbox database and a second storage group with the public folder database. So you could add 48 more storage groups and 48 more databases. Now, whether it's standard edition or enterprise edition, one thing that you want to keep in mind is that we should always leave at least one storage group not used so that we can create a recovery storage group in the event of a disaster. okay. Also, before you get to this final step of installing Exchange, you should have planned how many storage groups you're going to have and how many databases you're going to have. You might want to have like one database for the executives, uh, one for HR, one for IT. You might want to leave it all in one storage group in one database. You know, It depends how you want to configure it. A little bit later on in some other videos, I'm going to show you how to create different storage groups and databases. So in this presentation, I'm not too worried about all that, but it is something to keep in mind. Okay, now we can do setup. We can do setup dot 
com, and we could do the installation here from the command prompt if we wanted to. We can install, we can uninstall, we can also recover a server with setup.com, some other options here that I don't want to get into right now. But, you know, really to use the install options from the command prompt would be useful if I was a large um, exchange hosted services type company where I'm offering, you know, hosted exchange services and I need to install many exchange servers and I want to automate the process, I could use that option. I would think typically for the most common user, you would just run setup.exe and just go right into the GUI. Okay, so I would think that would be the most common thing that most people would do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing a scripted install. Absolutely not. I mean, there are definitely situations where that would come into play. Okay, now remember, we've already done all the pre-installation work that's already all done. All we got to do right now is just hop in and do the install. Okay, so again, I'm going to emphasize it again. The pre-installation steps are the most important. The actual installing itself is no big deal. Even if during the installation, there's something with your databases you want to do or your storage groups and it's not quite right, even after the installation is over, you can always go back in, create a brand new storage group, create a brand new database, it's no problem. Okay? So this initial screen just tells us that, you know, we're going to install Exchange and what it is. Make sure you always install the latest version. You want to try to install the version that has the latest service pack incorporated in the CD. You don't want to stick in an old Exchange install and then do the service pack upgrade afterwards. I mean, you can do that. It's probably just a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner, just to install the latest version with the service pack incorporated all at once. Kind of gives us a rundown of some of the basic features. We'll accept the terms of the license agreement. And we're going to support no error reporting. If you want to participate in the Microsoft program where we actually kind of report errors, you can do that. Now you have two options, either the typical or the custom. 99% of the time, you're going to do a typical exchange install. Now, you do have the option, and one of the big selling points of Exchange Server 2007 is its scalability. Okay? If I choose the custom option, I can choose to install the mailbox by itself. Notice these other options are grayed out. Client access by itself. Hub transport by itself. Unified messaging by itself. Okay, now watch this. If I pick the option to install the edge, everything else is turned off because the edge transport server role has to be installed on a server that is a non-domain member all by itself. Okay, so all those other options get turned off. I also have the option to install an active mailbox role and a passive mailbox role. Okay, and the program files will be at the default location, which is fine 99% of the time. What we're going to do is a typical install. Okay, If you really need the scalability of a custom install, by all means, go for it. You can have one server that's just the CAS server. You could have one server that's going to be just the mailbox server. right? And we'll call this Exchange 12 Rocks. Okay, We're going to support uh, the mix of clients. We'll have 2003 and 2007. Outlook clients, and it'll take off and do the uh, readiness checks. Okay, we can see that we meet the readiness checks. Uh, it's just telling us this is a 32-bit version, and we need to make sure we have a proper send connector built with a wildcard asterisk so we can send out uh, without any problems. So with the, when we're done installing, we have to make sure that we have the proper send connector, and we don't care about the 32-bit version part of it. Okay. We know it's 32-bit, and that's just going to go through and do the organizational prep, copy the files, install the management tools, the hub, the client, the mailbox role. We'll come back and look at this when it's finished. And there we can see it kind of finished up. So, you know, it's a little bit of a time-consuming process, but not too bad. So you can see that everything's completed. So go ahead and click Finish on that. And we'll have to reboot the server. And then the console opens, and we can see that everything has installed successfully. Uh, the next video will show you how to verify that the Exchange install went off without a hitch. So we'll go to the next video on how to verify a successful Exchange Server 2007 installation. Make sure you check that one out next. Thank you.